We're going to make text from scratch. So to follow along, go to Working Files, Projects, and open up 1603 Text from Scratch. I set up the sequence with just a black clip, and I'm calling it a black clip, but in fact it's a color mat. I made the color mat like this, selected black, and then I named it Black Clip. I did this because it gives you the option of viewing the text against the black background or against transparency. So let's make some text. Go down here to the New Item button, click on Title, and that opens up this dialog box. We can name it what we want. We'll call it Text, and click OK. And that opens up the Titler. I want to be able to see the black video that's on the sequence. And if I look over here, you can see that the current time indicator is on top of that black clip. So I'm now going to click on this little eyeball here, and that shows the background video, which in this case is black. If you don't want to see the background video, just uncheck that. There we go. So I'm going back to black here. When you hover your cursor over inside here, you see that it's an eye beam with little dots around it. That means you've got the type tool selected, and the dots mean that if you click somewhere, you're going to add new text there. If there are no dots there, as it is right here, that means you're inside an area or really near an area where text is present. And if you click there, you can add text inside that area. Out here, it's got a little box. In here, it doesn't. See that? It's blinking, which means if you start typing, you'll add text. So here is some text, like that. The font that it's using is the font that's first in the alphabetical order here. This shows all the fonts that are installed on my computer. Your computer will have different fonts, presumably, and they'll all be listed here with little samples off on the right-hand side there. If I want to change the font to something else, let's say I'll go down to Adobe Castellan Pro, it'll change it. Whatever's inside the box when the box is active will change. If I change it to something else, I'm going down here to Black Oak, which is kind of a big one, changes to that guy. I'm going to go back and change it back to Adobe Castellan. That's kind of the one I like to work with because it's kind of the fault. There we go. So that's how you add text. If I want to continue adding text there, I need to take a couple of steps. Right now, you don't see that blinking white thing anymore. So if I start typing something, nothing will happen other than I'll change the font over here because this is what's active. The font is active. Let me go back to Castle and make sure that something strange doesn't happen when I select it again. As long as that's active, this is not. If I want to start typing text over here again in this same box, I need to click inside it. Remember here we're outside. You see little dotted lines. Here the dotted lines go away. We're typing inside. If I start typing there, I can add text like that. I can use my arrow key to go forward, press the Enter Return key, go down to the next line, like that. Press Enter Return again and keep on going down the line. Every time you press Enter Return, you add a new line. That's how it works when you add text using the Type tool. If I want to change the size of the text, there are a couple ways to do that. I could click the Selection tool. And that puts a bounding box around the currently active set of text. If I drag a corner like this, it'll make it larger, smaller taller, fatter. I can do the same thing over here. I can change the font over here. Aspect, that's how wide the text is. Letting, that's how much space there is between the lines. It's not leading as some people think. It's letting because it's based on lead text. Kerning is the space between the letters. Usually that's done on an individual letter basis, but in this case it does all letters at once. If I take my type tool and click somewhere inside here between two letters like that, then kerning will affect only those two letters. And I can spread it out or put it closer together. Some people like to fine tune their text this way. Baseline shift. Right now, this is the baseline, that little white line there, that's the baseline. I can have it shift above or below the baseline like that. I can cause the letters to slant, which is not really italics, it just slants them like so. Small caps, if I click this, it'll make them all small caps, except for the leading capital letter like that. And I can decide how large the caps will be. The leading one stays the same size as the font. There we go. Underline it. The distort feature is kind of funny. You can distort on X axis like that, or the Y axis like that. I'm going to reset everything by clicking over here. This is a style, and this is the default style. If I click on that, it's going to put it back to normal using Castellan as the default, like that. We're going to talk about styles in the next lesson. There are other ways to add text, so I'm going to delete this text. I need to make the whole bounding box active by clicking on the selection tool. Coming over here and hovering it over, it becomes active. Now that it's active, I can press the delete key and it's gone. This is the vertical text tool. If I hover over here, you see that it's sideways. It doesn't mean that the text will be sideways, it just means that it's going to be vertically, it's going to stand up and be added one above the other. Here is text. You get it? I'll delete that by clicking on the selection tool, hovering over it, getting that bounding box, and pressing delete. This is the area type tool. You define the region in which you're going to put the text. So here's the region, like that. 
The font size is set here, so you start typing. And if you keep on going, it automatically wraps. If I press enter, it goes down a line. I'm going to press a lot of keys, enter, a lot of keys, a lot of keys. Now I'm going to go one more line, and I get a little plus sign there saying you've exceeded the boundary. You've gone beyond the edge of the boundary. If I keep on typing, I'm actually putting text down there in that hidden area. But it's not going to show up here because this is the region in which I'm allowed to see the text. If I change the font size, it'll start appearing like that. Or if I click on the bounding box here, if I drag this, you think it's going to appear? Let's go there. So the text doesn't change size in this case. It just reveals more or less that you put in. If you want to change the size, you need to do it over here. You can change the size or other characteristics of text by simply selecting a word. You get the type tool like this and double click on a word and that'll select the entire word. You can change the font to something else or change the size. So I'll just change the size of just that word. If I want to change the font, I can just go over here and change the font to something entirely different, like Ariel, just for the word. I'm going to go back to Castellan for that. There's another way to add text. I want to get rid of this by clicking on the selection tool and then moving my cursor in here and it automatically selects the bounding box there. Press delete. This is the path type tool. You get to put text on a path and you use the pen tool to do this. The path type tool really is just kind of an elaborate pen tool. And if you've never worked with a pen tool before, it can be a little confusing. Your goal usually when creating a path is to make it a curve. So you click on this. When you click here, you need to click and drag, not just click, but click and drag. And that defines handles. The handles define the curve. Go over here a little farther away, click and drag. You can see if you drag around like this, it defines the shape of the curve like that and the steepness of it and things like that. I'm going to click one more point here, click and drag. There we go. Same routine as before. I can move this around to define the curve. Now, if I click again here, it's going to add another point. I don't want to do that. I'm done now. I'm going to go Control Z to do that. I'd rather stop now. So to stop, I need to go to the selection tool to kind of stop the process. Now, if I click here, I can move it around, but I can't see the path. To see the path, I can click on the pen tool. That's the pen tool. Now when I hover over it, I can see the path. I hover over one of these vertices, I can move the vertex around like that. If I hover over one of the handles, and I gotta be careful when I get up there, the little circle at the end of the arrow, that means I can hover over the handle and move the handle to define the shape of the curve there. And define the shape of the curve down here. I hover until I get that little guy showing up. It's kind of tricky to manipulate the path. You have to be very careful where you put your cursor. Right there, it has an X on it. If I click there, then I'm going to click away. I'm not going to select the handle. If I get right on it, then I get that little circle. I can drag this around like that. Now that I've defined the path, I want to put text on it. So I need to go over here and grab the type tool. If I come inside here, you're going to watch it go from a type tool that has a box around it to one that doesn't have it. If I click anywhere in here, that's going to put the cursor at the beginning of the path. So here is some text on a path, and so on, and so on. We went off the edge of the path. We can reveal that by changing the font size to bring it in like this. There we go. Or I could change the aspect as well to bring it on. Now that we've got on the path, we can again rearrange it if we just grab the pen tool here and select one of the vertices and move it around like so. Move a handle around like that. There you go. So that's how you put text on a path. And you can also put text on a vertical path as well. So I want to show you one more thing. I click on the selection tool here and hover inside here to get that bounding box. Press delete to get rid of that. I'm going to click on the type tool again. Click anywhere in here and type in some text. And I just want to make it large again. Click on the selection tool. Hover over here to get the bounding box and drag it out like so. Now that I've done that, I just want to show you some other things here. I want to point out a couple things about the title. It works similarly to the Premier Pro workspace. You can change the size of the panels here like that. Bring them down, bring them up, and they all work kind of in concert with each other. If you scroll on down here in the properties, you'll see there are other things that we didn't talk about here. Fill, strokes, shadows, background. These are things we're going to cover in upcoming lessons. And down here you have styles. We're going to cover styles in the next lesson. So there you go, that's a basic overview of how you create text from scratch here inside the Premiere Pro Titler.